obviously I'm, I'm proud as heck of you and, and you guys deserve this and, and this has been one of those seasons so far that's been obviously up and down but tonight we grew up and you responded to the challenge playing for 40 minutes hey, defensively and what's great about tonight is we didn't we still have room for improvement we really do we got a lot of room for improvement you were great on offense Okay, taking great shots. I don't think there weren't were too many bad shots. We just got we just have to understand good shots versus bad shots. But uh, guys, the way you guarded, and we out rebounded them 45 to 32. Okay, that's that's Colorado basketball. I don't know what they shot from the field. 31. 31. Three. Guys, you defend, you rebound, and, and, and the game's easy. Okay? Now, that's one game. Okay? And and the, the, what we have to understand as we go on the road, okay, to LA is we're the same team, okay? You guys are the same guys tonight as that played on Thursday. Now we play differently, and when you do your job, it's amazing. <laughs> all right, fellas. So we all three. One, two, three, family. Well, some great images after the contest and Coach Boyle's comments after the Buffaloes blow out the Oregon Ducks by 22 here at the CU Event Center, bouncing back from a terrible loss on Thursday night to Oregon State. Hi, everybody. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson. How about our player of the game here? This guy, Tyler Bay, the sophomore from Las Vegas, a career-high 27 points, 10 rebounds, seventh double level of the season, a couple of highlight real dunks out there. That seemed like a little bit of fun. We should do this more often. Definitely. <laughs> I really agree. You came out of this ball game off a tough contest on Thursday. I know you were disappointed in your performance against the Beavers. You came out early and I thought really set the tone out there. A lot of intensity early on. Talk about that. Um, I, I just came out and wanted to play because, you know, I did have a bad game, but I wanted to play for my teammates and the coaching staff because they're there for me a lot. And uh, I know I have my head down a lot and sometimes um, I need to pick it up. Yeah. And I'm still working on it, but it's a process, and we got a dub today, and I'm really proud of what we did. You know, Tony, what, what I getting to know you over the last couple of years. I mean, you're not you're not a guy that's going to go out and raw raw guy. You're not going to be talking a lot, but you're the kind of guy with your athleticism. You can kind of come out and set a tone, can't you, by the way you play? That probably speaks louder than words, and that could be the way you lead on this team. Do you think? Oh yeah, definitely. Like when I dunk the ball, I know my teams teammates are involved a lot because they're excited and it gets them going. So. You know, being an athlete is, is kind of a tough deal because there's a lot of honesty, right? Yeah. So after a game like the other night, you sit down, I think you sat down with Kim English, didn't you? Assistant coach for the Buffalo. Yep, yep. And had a film session. And he goes over and says, look, Tyler, you didn't do this. You didn't do that. That's got to be kind of a tough moment to sit and kind of go through those kind of highlights or lowlights, as you will. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it was, I was, I was really frustrated at myself because, you know, I know I could have played better. Um, but it's, I learned from it. And I saw that today. What do you think is the aspect of your game where you're growing the most in your second season? I don't know. Just, you know, just rebounding and playing defense. Mm -hmm. I just want to be there for my teammates and do the little things. Is it tough? I, I think about this team a little bit with, with you and McKinley and Deshaun. You're just second year players, but you're, you're, be asked, you're being asked to be in a very prominent role with this team. You've been asked a little bit because of the way this team was made up of the roster to grow up very quickly in this team, haven't you? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. We have to step up. That's yeah. the only thing we can do. So, yeah. Tyler and the Buffaloes get an awful nice win by 22 points as they knock off the Oregon Ducks here on a Saturday night at the CU Event Center. We caught up with the fellas, by the way. You know the game horse? They were playing buffs the other day here at the Event Center. This is Elon. This is Dalen. We're going to play a game of horse. I'm about to get the dub. <laughs> <laughs> D. So, how you feel freshman year? How you feel going? Uh, <laughs> like a little rough right now, but I've been working. So I'm gonna get better. Oh my god! <laughs> Does that be you? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you yeah, vert. Vert. Oh, vert. You might get me. You got me on this one. Ah. Man. Oh. Yo. <laughs> like this, I jump off the backboard and then dumped it. Strong hand. Oh. Ah. Game time. Man. 
man. You see who won. Fellas are playing buffs out there. Okay, if you guys are going to play buffs or horse, who's going to be the best player in that regard on this team? That's hard. I'll probably say. Who's the best shot maker just out there messing around on the court? Shane. Shane? Shane Gatlin, yes. Yeah. Because yeah. he's got the, you can hit and hit the yeah. deep shot. And he's really, he's probably more athletic than guys think. Yeah. A lot of people think. Yeah, he has sneaky bounce. <laughs> okay. Who's a better dunker, you or him? It's me. Okay. Yeah, that, that was kind of a silly question here on the Buffalo Stampede TV show by the voice of the bus, right? Yeah. Uh, the way you guys play defensively, this first time we've seen it in a while. I know Tad has been on to you guys a little bit about being consistent defensively. You came out in this victory over the Ducks and gave them full 40 minutes of defense, didn't you? Yeah, I think we played for each other tonight. Sometimes I got beat tonight, and my teammates were there to take a charge. And those are little things. Those are winning plays Coach talks about, and we did it. So. You know, it's interesting. that There was a play in this ball game where you had, you were guarding somebody, and he got about a half step on you. And, you, you know, defensively, you look to count on your teammates being where they're supposed to be. And he got by you, but Deshaun was right there to take a charge. Those are the little things, aren't they, that make exactly. a good defensive team? Exactly. Yeah, those are the plays Coach talks about, the winning plays, and we, are the, we play for each other tonight. All right, you're halfway through conference play. Bubble is now three and six in Pac-12 play. Nine games remaining. Can this be a springboard, do you think? Oh, definitely. Yeah. We, we still got work to do. Um, we're going to get back to work next week and do what we got to do. All right. Like I said, this is fun. Let's do it again. Of course. <laughs> That's Tyler Bay. He was our player of the game. 27 points and 10 rebounds as the Buffs get a 22-point win over the Oregon Ducks. We're going to take a time out here in the Stampede. The head coach, Tad Boyle, joins us next. Taken away by Straining, who gets up to Kuntz, who flies in from the left side. And a top. That's a highlight by the Denver East product, Dan and Kuntz, with a big dunk down a stretch. Buffs win it by 22, bouncing back after a tough loss of a girl versus Oregon State on Thursday night. Got a big one over the Ducks. Ted Boyle joining us here on the Stampede. That's the way you bounce back, huh? That was a great bounce back win. Yeah. Something we really needed. Our players were terrific. Uh, Tyler Bay, what can you say about yeah. his performance? But uh, a great team victory. We defended, we rebounded. And Mark, we're still not shooting the ball well, which is amazing from three. I mean, right. we, we shot the ball well inside the arc, but outside the arc, we, we've been struggling. But uh, still a lot of room for improvement, but uh, great bounce back win. Our, our fans were fantastic. Yep. Uh, great response from them, and uh, couldn't be more proud of our guys. Hey, as painful as it is, let's glance back to that Thursday game yeah. real quick. And that game, I thought about it, epitomized the inconsistency issue, inconsistency issue you've been talking about this season about as much as any. Yeah, and it's not like we were terrible on Thursday. We just we just weren't good enough to win. And we, you know, it was a tie game with a minute 50 to go. It was a tie game with a minute 19 to go. We could not get stops when we needed to get stops yeah. uh, on a consistent basis. And uh, but against Oregon, we do. And that's that's the defense that we we uh, are even on the boards with Oregon State. We're plus 13 against. Oregon and that's why those are the two things we look at night in and night out they're going to turn those close uh, losses into close wins and then when you really do it at a high level like we did against Oregon the, the score takes care of itself so this team is young we're learning we're getting better and uh, you know, we're going to be in some tight games. I, I know this team has challenged you and this staff in terms of how to approach it because and, and, and that great old line you and I joke about all the time, there's six inches between a kick and the tail and a pound the back. Absolutely. And you've had to really, I think, walk a fine line with this team. Yeah, and I think after Oregon State, they didn't need a kick in the tail. Right. They needed a pat on the back. Like, like here's, and we did individual film sessions with our guys. We didn't do a group film session. We had quick turnarounds. So, uh, you're right. This has been a challenging team, but it's a fun team to coach. I love our guys. And, uh, there's, there's going to be some ups and some downs. We knew that coming into the season, and yeah. we're, we're experiencing it. Buffaloes get that nice bounce back win over Oregon. We're going to talk more about the victory over the Ducks in a moment. Right now we step aside for some highlights. Big event at the IPF, the CU Invitational with the track and field team. Another amazing weekend for the Colorado Buffaloes and track and fields. We had a record turnout for athletes in attendance and spectators. It was a phenomenal weekend in the indoor practice facility at CU Boulder. Each area had specifically wonderful things happen. Our sprints area was phenomenal this weekend. Our female hurdlers did an exceptional job. We have three of the top four hurdlers in school history right now all running, which is incredibly exciting. Gabby Scott broke of a 1996 school record in the 400 meters, and that was fantastic. She's currently ranked 20th in the nation. Also, Dwayne McCurkin on the men's side, he had a very fast 400 feet yard by a half a second, and he is also one of the top in the conference now. On the distance side, it was absolutely phenomenal for many of the athletes, including Joe Fletcher, who is currently ranked number one in the nation, number one in our conference. He broke the school record as well. It was Frank Shoulders the last time to race this fast in Colorado. So he ran an 801 and it got converted to a 748. 
McKenna Morley also was absolutely stellar in the 3K. She posted an enormous time and she's also ranked in the top 20 in the NCAA right now. And then also Tabor Scholl in the mile. She won it by a landslide. And it was an absolutely gorgeous race. She's also ranked in the top 20 in the NCAA right now as well. So other stand-up performances, our throws team did phenomenal for each of them. Almost every single athlete walked away with not one lifetime PR, but for many of them they had two lifetime PRs in the weight throw and the shot put. And um, then also within the jumps, Jeremy Cody won another meet. He's just a freshman. He's cleaning up house on this one. Kylie Hart also had a new PR and she ranks up in the top of the conference now with our other two women who are above 170 in high jump. And then we also had some great performances in the multi. Josh Farmer, I'm really, really excited about. He was a freshman. He PR'd in seven out of seven events and uh, he is currently ranked fourth in conference and Davis Butte is just ahead of him in third in conference and he also had a, a good performance this weekend. Some great highlights from the CU track team. Buffs get the 22-point win in basketball as they knock off the Oregon Ducks. We continue uh, with Tad Boyle. Tyler Bay, we mentioned him uh, a moment ago. He was with us in the first segment. 27 points, 12, 10 rebounds. He didn't like the way he played on Thursday. Right. Uh, he knew it. Tad, he's not a real vocal guy, but he can be a leader in terms of with the, bringing the intensity and playing at that level all the time, can he? Yeah, he can because, number one, he's one of our better players. Our players know it. The guys in the you know, locker room know how good Tyler can be and explosive he is. And uh, when he plays that way and plays with the energy and plays with the enthusiasm, uh, steps up and knocks down his free throws. Uh, yep. I mean, he was 9 for 9 from the field and, and uh, almost at a school record. Uh, uh, not that he's going to have 27 and 10 every night, but we just need the focus. I thought the focus that Tyler showed during the Oregon game from start to finish was the best he's had since he's been here. And so we, we've got to build on that. And uh, he's not going to be perfect. And no, we, nobody is. But uh, the intensity and the, uh, the athleticism he brings to the game is, yeah. is, is special. And it's, uh, it was good to see him bounce, bounce back and respond. Oregon's the kind of creature that, that lives off the opposition mistakes. When they bring that press out, they can turn that around and kind of those pick sixes going the other way. You guys did a relatively good job of handling that. We you? did. I think with like two minutes, two and a half minutes to go in the game, we had 11 turnovers, which is the number we want to have. And, and uh, so we talked about it, and uh, our guys handled the press. We handled the pressure. We attacked them. And, uh, I, again, we that was the key to the game. And we did that, and we uh, we really guarded for 40 minutes. We were in the gaps. We. We took, you could just tell our guys were dialed in. And that's, it's fun to watch. Can, can this be a springboard for you? Absolutely. Absolutely it yeah. can. Absolutely. Now, you know, it's one game at a time, the old day. And we're, our deal is we're going to get better uh, at practice every single day. And we got to figure out how to beat UCLA on Wednesday. All right. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Head coach Tad Bull, he's going to get a 22 point win over the Oregon Ducks at the CU Event Center. Stay with us. We'll continue after a quick break here in the Bubble Day Stampede. Defensively locked in, getting rewarded on the other side. And we continue with the Buffalo Stampede. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, the scribe joining us. We haven't had Neil on for a while. Neil, welcome. See you, bus.com. Where you been? Basketball. Oh. <laughs> and a little football. And a nice uh, win for the men's basketball team. We just talked with Tad and, and Tyler a moment ago. Uh, not a great result last Thursday against the Beavers of Oregon State, but what a turnaround in that 22 point win. Meanwhile, over the Ducks on Saturday. What a, by far their best overall performance of the year. Started out strong, 40 to 17 lead at the half. At halftime, I have to admit, I was sitting there going, okay, can they just hold on to this lead? Right. And not only did they hold on to it, they continued to play that way the whole second half. They were up by 30 at one point. Uh, best overall effort, you no think, doubt. You think about that game, though, and, and it, it's part of what I think is keeping Tad awake at night, and probably Buff fans as well. They can look that good at one point in time, and then have a second half like they did against, you know, go back to the Stanford, Stanford game yeah. or, or even Oregon State for that, that matter. Or Cal. And, or Cal. And that, that's the yep. Jekyll and Hyde nature of this team that's so tough to figure out. Yeah, it is. And I, and I think that they when they see what they did the other night against Oregon, when they watch film of that and when they see that, they come out to practice and I think they decide, hey, if you can't do that for 40 minutes, there's nobody in the Pac-12 right. they can't beat. Yeah. I mean, even look at the Washington game. They're down by a lot. They came back. They were within one of Washington with about four or five minutes left in the game. So. They know that when they play like that for an entire game, they can play with anybody in the conference. And by the way, I'm buying stock in that Tyler Bay that we saw on Saturday. I tell you what, huh? they're 27 selling, to 10? I'm buying. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a career high 27 points, 18 and nine in the first half. Tyler Bay outscored Oregon in the first half of that game. It was 18 to 17 at the half. Tyler Bay 18, Oregon 17. Buff men on the road against UCLA Wednesday and then on Saturday at, at USC. Switching over to the women's side. It, it has been a tough stretch. They started 10 and 1 to start the season. Winless right now in Pac-12 conference play. When you play in that league and you lose your 
all everything point guard, that becomes a tough combination for I tell you what, you know, that's that you lose your senior starting point guard, first team all pack 12. One of the best players in CU history. Yeah, one of the best players, all time assist leader, a good shooter, somebody that just makes things happen, and kind of the glue. Your point guard is the quarterback, your point guard is the glue. When you lose that, and then you are playing in, in arguably the best conference in the nation, that's a, that's a tough road to hoe, and, and certainly a lot of young players on that team. I still like what JR has overall, and I think there's there's you know uh, something to look forward to with this team in the future. The women have got the LA schools coming here to the event center Friday and Sunday this weekend. Get on out and cheer on JR Payne to see you women. The tennis team coming off a nice win over the weekend. We caught up with a couple of the newcomers recently at a photo shoot for CU Tennis. So we have two new players this spring that just uh, came to campus about a week ago. Um, so we had to do a little uh, action pictures. So we have uh, Tallulah Ferro. Tallulah's from uh, Australia, Canberra, Australia. Um, and I think uh, Tallulah is very motivated. Uh, we, we think she, uh, she has the right attitude, the right work ethics to really contribute to the team. And then Sara Nair is from Brisbane, Australia, uh, originally from Malaysia. And um, she's a, she's a high-level player, so we're expecting a, a good career from her. Um, so the newcomers got a little taste of uh, media today, and then we're going to use that to have our poster ready, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, not the ideal weather conditions. I think today was just bad luck with the wind. Um, so, you know, we got in and out as quick as we can, and I was just throwing some balls to the girls to, to get those extra shots and make that as realistic as possible, but we were just trying to get out of, out of the wind as fast as we can. Certainly a nice win for CU Tennis over the weekend as we continue with Neil Welk of CUBus.com. This time of year, you're not talking a lot of football, but now with the early signing period, this becomes the traditional signing period, and it looks like Mel Tucker hitting the ground running, putting that staff together, did a pretty good job, I think, with the class. I tell you what, you've got to like this class. They addressed a lot of needs. They got some size. They got some strength. They got some kids that can come in and play right away, and not only just the JUCO kids that signed, but also some, some good high school players that they think could come in and compete for starting spots or at least some significant playing time right away next year especially up front where they need it offensive line defensive line those are some you know those are some places that need to be addressed and I think they really like what they got in that area one thing I like about what Mel Tucker did when he was at Alabama and Georgia obviously he had a tendency because that's what you do there walking into the best living rooms in America if you will of the best recruits he didn't shy away from going after those guys no as a head coach and, and that's what you have to do yeah. here and I think you know and I hate to keep going back to the McCartney era but that's what Bill McCartney did when he got here right. Bill McCartney came here from Michigan and said we're not going to go after the second tier kids. We're going to go after the very best. We're going to get in their in their living rooms, offer them, and that's what Mel Tucker's doing. And I think it's already starting to show up. Uh, it's only going to get better too. You've walked through the weight room a number of times. I've been out with basketball so much, but walked through. There's a little different feel. You can tell Mel came in here and set up the top. We're doing things a certain way. It's going to be at a certain level. That's trickled down to the players. It's right now. gotten a little tougher in there, yeah. I, you know. And I just think the overall culture and the attitude is, uh, hey, it's a it's a fresh start. Everybody's starting at, at square one, and uh, I think the strength coaches, conditioning coaches, have taken that the same way. And uh, yeah, it's it's been a, it's been a fun spring so far. By well, the way, fun for me, not for them. No, that's right. Uh, spring ball gets that away. Late March spring game coming up, April 27th. We're looking uh, forward to getting our first look at what Mel Tucker brings the CU football program once they get in the field. For Neil Welk, CUBus.com. I'm. Boy to the boss Mark Johnson as we continue here on the Bubble Stampede. We're going to talk Ralphie. John Graves, the program director, joins us next. Here comes Ralphie and your Colorado Buffaloes. Well, one of the most iconic moments in college, well, sports, period, for goodness sakes, when Ralphie is making a run back in the Stampede. I'm voice of the boss Mark Johnson. John Graves, program manager for the Ralphie program. You know, you might have the coolest job on campus, you know that? Absolutely. <laughs> no doubt about it. Last year was the 50th. Yeah, we Correct. just went through the 51st, of yep. course. But what do we learn about this program, do you think? Oh, it's a great program, a right. great tradition. Yeah. Nothing like it. Yeah. And she's been fantastic. Yes. Yeah, this is Ralphie 5. Correct, Ralphie 5. Yeah. And how, how is she doing, I mean, in terms of her growth and maturation? We're talking about a girl here, so i got to be careful when I talk <laughs> about age, of course. Yeah, so Ralphie yeah. 5, uh, currently she's 12 years old, just finished her 11th season leading the buffs out on the field. Right. Uh, running great. She loves it. As you saw this past season, she's running strong and fast. So she's still enjoying it and looking forward to starting next season as well. What do you think is the most biggest misconception do you think about a buffalo that runs like Ralphie does 
The biggest question we get and yeah. pe people are surprised by is that Ralphie is a girl. She's always a girl. <laughs> right. Ralphie's always been a girl. Uh, male buffalo, they're a thousand pounds heavier and a foot taller than yeah. a female. And a little bit aggressive. Yeah, a little bit. So that's yeah. why we've always used the female yeah. buffalo for Ralphie. All right. We're here, by the way, in the Del Ward weight room. This is where the handlers work out, right? Correct. And so this isn't just showing up on Saturday afternoon and making a quick run with the buffalo. No, no. Yeah. Year round, year round, the, the handlers, they work out. Uh, they do a lot of conditioning in the weight room, lifting a lot of heavy weights. And we also do a lot of sprint conditioning as well because they got to be strong and fast around with Ralphie. Ralphie stays in great shape. Right. The handlers, they got to work hard to stay in shape to keep up with Ralphie. I've been asking for years if I could run with her and be a handler. John is always nice not telling me I'm too old. What do you look for in a Ralphie handler? Though? Uh, the biggest thing, honestly, is coachability. Yeah. Obviously, we need great athletes that are fast and strong, but we need someone who's coachable, too. Not many people come in with experience running with a buffalo. Right. You know, we've yet to have anyone try out that has that experience. So right. we got to be able to teach someone the skill and the technique to be able to run with the buffalo. Um, we have tryouts coming up this year in conjunction with the spring wow. game. Hopefully, we get some great applicants. You know, we think a lot of time about alums being athletes. So there are a lot of alums, in fact, with the Ralphie program. This past season, we caught up with a couple. Everybody's back from homecoming, and it's pretty great just seeing all the old handlers and people that we've run with previously or people that we've learned from previously. Seeing all the different people that have run with the different Ralphies and all seeing the evolution of the program and how different people have run with her differently and seeing how everything has changed from 1967 to now. Being back here means a lot. Having this relationship with Ralphie has been incredible and just being able to see her and brings back so many memories and being able to reconnect with everyone has been so special. Being a Ralphie handler has meant so much. It's become such a big part of my identity and just being part of such a special tradition that has carried on so well and been such a signature event as part of the pre-game tradition has been really great and uh, something that I'll carry throughout my entire life. There's a couple of great alums for the Ralphie program as so we continue with the program manager, John Graves. You know, it should be noted here, not only do you run the Ralphie program, you're involved in kind of the bison world, aren't That's you? That's right. And we just had the National Western. Tell us what you're up to. Yeah, so the last week of the stock show in Denver is kind of bison week, right? Um, there in the stockyards is the gold trophy show and sale. So bison, breeding bison, premium bison from across the nation in Canada come in for this big gold trophy show and sale put on by the National Bison Association. Uh, I'm on a few committees for the National Bison okay. Association, so I help them out. I am the yards manager down in the stockyards and the bison are there, so I kind of oversee the bison there, help make sure they're handled properly, safely, humanely, uh, and go through all that. I bring some of the handlers down with me too nice. to lend their expertise to help us handle them for the big show and sale. Um, also, is during that week when the bison are in the stockyards, uh, we have the big National Bison Winter Conference as well. So a big conference going on, a lot of educational topics. Um, every year I speak at that as well, okay. give a few presentations there. So I've been working with the National Bison Association for about 12 years. Uh, it's a lot of fun. You did something that was kind of fun. I saw it over social media. You presented Ted Turner, who's helped us out yes. with Ralphie, obviously, with, with one of the great replicas of the great statue we got outside the Absolutely. Champion Center. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was there. Ted Turner, all of his ranch managers come in during that Bison Week for the Winter Conference there. Uh, they have their meetings. Uh, Ted is there too. Ted's right. very active in his ranches and his bison operation. Uh, he's the second largest landowner in America and largest bison owner in America. Uh, he's been a great supporter of the Ralphie program. Uh, he's donated Ralphie 4 and Ralphie 5 to our program. Uh, we go on tours, educational tours mm -hmm. of his ranches with the handlers. Uh, he's been a great supporter, so to thank him, we presented him with that Ralphie statue. He loved it. He was so excited. All of his ranch managers were excited. It was a great deal. Awful cool. He's got the coolest job on campus, no doubt about it. Program manager for the Ralphie program, John Graves.